On May 29, 2020, students at Newport's Thompson Middle School tuned into a webinar aboard SSV Oliver Hazard Perry. Along with Dan O'Connor, our program director, and our crew Miranda, Eric, and Jackson, students learned about simple machines and mechanical advantage as the crew used a pulley system to lift and transfer a ship's life raft from the deck to the dock. This video is a recording of the live stream from the ship and is provided courtesy of Taylor Rock, science teacher at Thompson Middle School. Thank you for all the students for joining us and enjoy the video. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. This is terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Dan O'Connor and, and Oliver Hazard Perry for having us. And I know we have um, a good amount of students in the room. And um, thank you, students, for being muted. Hi, Gia Marco. Hi, Madison. Hi, everyone. It's great to see, see you all. Nice work in uh, guessing the height of the masks there. So Mrs. Louie and I are really excited that you're all here. And we hope that this um, helps with your physics curriculum um, that you've been studying really hard lately. And um, big thank you to the Oliver Hazard Perry, Captain Jonathan and, and Dan who um, and Jen, who are the education coordinators and other guests. Um, welcome, we're really, really happy that this collaboration happened with, uh, with Thompson Middle School and it really helps out in this uh, day of distance learning to have some live um, fun virtual field trips. So we'll wait uh, maybe a couple more minutes just until like 10.30 or a little bit past and get started. Hi, Nelly. Um, this is really exciting. And thank you for using the chat feature respectfully, students. This is terrific. Remember, we'll have time for questions at the end of the presentation from um, from Dan. And, um, and we'll wait a couple minutes before we get officially started. So thank you all. <laughs> Glad to hear you enjoy Christmas. So, if there's any kind of questions you're thinking about already, right in the chat com, um, we'll try again as we move through things. Um, you know, if you if there's any words that we might not get off the most, that would uh, we'll try to stay we'll try to stay away away from that. Uh, and uh, use the chat box. For Ben, a boy, Oliver, Hazard Perry, um, for. Different question. Has anybody wondered why there was this big, huge, pirate looking ship in your town of Newport? So I'll let you, we'll let you catch up. So, as we're waiting for, we asked folks to guess the, the map height, which was um, 122 and a half feet. A big tall thing sticking up out of off the deck of the ship. Uh, but if anybody wanted to guess about how deep the boat goes, so the word for that would be draft. How far under the water does it go? I'll give you a hint. Robert, nope. Madison, nope. That is very that deep where you're going to watch it now. Eighteen, five feet, seventeen feet, fifteen feet, three feet, twenty-five feet. No, eleven feet. James is getting close, but but not not quite there yet. I'll give it. Getting even closer, Madison. Uh, maybe officially right now it's twelve, but we are concerned with one number. Ah, Madison got it. Thirteen feet deep. Um, 
So those numbers you're seeing, you see the 13 and the 12, that is our load line uh, indicating the depth of the ship. Um, some, some vessels have these, larger commercial type vessels, but most other types of boats you'll see you know, throughout Newport aren't necessarily going to have load lines on them. Um, but uh, 13 feet is definitely uh, fairly, fairly deep. Yeah. There's another type of boat here. That's, that's the pump out boat. I know you do a lot of um, conservation stuff with uh, Mr. Rock. This Mr. is just Rock. another. Is that what you're calling? All right. So um, we've got a good mass of students um, joining in. And um, seems like we're we might be ready to go. It's a little bit past 1030. Um, so thank you for welcoming us Oliver Hazard Perry and thank you uh, Dan O'Connor for giving us the tour and all the staff involved. So TMS students, um, you're doing great so far. Let's keep our lines muted and use the chat box for answering questions and um, and there'll be time for questions at the end as well and um, let's be attentive, great, powerful students to the tour and, um, and physics lesson that we'll be learning here today at the Oliver Hazard Perry. So whenever you're ready, Dan, you can take it away. All right. Thank you again, Mr. Rock, and thank you for Thompson Mill School for being here. I'm going to be on camera for approximately 20 seconds before I switch it over. Um, wanted to introduce myself to say thank you for being here. We appreciate it. We will be getting specifically into some physics work uh, in simple machines. Um, Prior to do that, I'm going to give you a very, very quick tour of our ship. Let me flip the camera around one more time and get it out into the good view. So this is the Oliver Hazard Perry. Um, we are a 200 foot length, 471 gross ton ship. I'm down here at the pier right now. We're looking at the back end uh, of the ship, also known as the stern. Um, and you'd see our name there over, over here. We are currently docked at Bowen's Wharf in uh, Newport. This is our home port. And we are also the official toll ship of the state of Rhode Island. Um, to kind of give you an idea of how large we are, I'm going to walk the whole length of the ship. And we're looking up here from the pier is our bowsprit. So this is giving you an idea, our 210 10-foot ship. Um, we are... We do not take passengers aboard our ship. We are a SSV, that stands for Sailing School Vessel. So we take students aboard the ship. Um, students as your age or students who are 70 years old. Um, and once your students are aboard the boats, as we are not passengers, you are always a crew member when you are aboard our vessel. So I'm boarding our gangway here, coming up. Look at a few few different scientific things, but I want to introduce you to our professional crew first. Uh, Miranda, say hello. That's Miranda. She is our chief mate. Jackson is our, uh, he works with our deck and engine department, um, sometimes serves as the chief of most things. And finally, this is Eric. Eric Izzo um, is our chief engineer. Um, You'll hear some terms uh, of different types of jobs on the, on the ship, but it can really be broken down into two categories. That is working on the deck, and that means everything from driving the ship, navigating the ship, um, handling all the lines, uh, or you can work in the engine department. The engine department is responsible for all the systems and machinery on the ship. Um, you'll see that, see that in a bit. Um, how do we feel with 58 students aboard the ship? Um, we would we'd feel pretty, pretty good about that. We can take up to, on day sales, up to 75 students. I'm looking at the crew to give me confirmation. So, yeah, so we could take that, 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 many, that many aboard. Um, so just a quick, quick word about our crew and some of the challenges we have today is we are a working ship. There are things we need to have done. Um, always constant maintenance, always things to be done on the ship. And because of COVID-19, we are not able to bring on our full crew, which could be anywhere between seven and 15 people, um, because there's a lot of work to do on that. 
And since we have such a smaller crew right now, a lot of the work we have to do poses certain challenges for us, um, not just in terms of hours to get things done, but we, you know, to run a ship like this, you, there are a lot of things going on and a lot of things that need to be lifted. Um, so our challenge later on today will kind of be dealing, dealing with, with some of that. Um, as professional mariners that you're looking at here, the crew, um, these folks have trained extensively to be able to carry out their job. Um, some of our crew have gone on to universities and colleges where they become mariners, either in the deck or engine department. But there are other ways to be a mariner as well. If a mariner is somebody who's working aboard the ship. Um, you may sometimes hear of a term called a hosspiper. Now, somebody that may not have gone necessarily to a university trained as a mariner, um, but their training really happens aboard, aboard the ship um, and experience over time. Um, you know, so that's something that you can do. Uh, one of the things you're working on as a class right now are dealing with simple machines. Um, that is something our crew is very well versed in and something that they're working with every, every single day. Um, so we'll come back to the crew in a moment. And I'm going to kind of give you a quick tour of the ship, starting out here at the bow. Um, what you're seeing over here is our jib boom or force bar. This carries some triangle sails. And now I'm at the very front of the boat. Okay, I'm here. I'm going to turn around. I'm looking aft now, uh, back towards uh, the back end of the boat. We have three masts that we're pointing out. We're 122 and a half feet from the waterline. And when we're looking up in the mast, you're seeing a lot of lines or rigging. Some of that rigging is fixed rigging, wires like this type of stuff. We can use those to climb up into the rigging. Other rigging, which we'll be using today, are these lines over here. Um, that's what's called our running rigging. Aboard our ship, we have seven miles of running rigging. And to give you an idea of how actually long that is to move all these things around, if you left your school at Thompson and walked from your school all the way to the Newport Bridge, over the Newport Bridge, across Jamestown, and then over the Jamestown Bridge into Saunderstown, that's seven miles. That's how much rigging we have on the ship. Um, so I'll move over to the other side of the vessel. Moving aft here, um, this is our rescue boat. Our rescue boat is, uh, this as it sounds, it's if somebody was to go overboard, we can use this to go pick them up. We also use it for line handling operations. Uh, moving much further aft here towards the back of the vessel. We're getting over to the area of the vessel. Ship's wheel, covered, compass covered. Um, and inside this little shack is what's called our nav shack. This is an area where a lot of our electronics that help us know where we're going on the ship, our radios, we have a lot of different types of radios, light switches, controls, and finally, our charts on our nav table so we're looking at uh, some say this is a map but this is a little bit different than a map this is more giving us information about the waterway and the things that are around us we do see kind of newport over here um, thompson middle school up on broadway would be uh, uh let's not worry about that um but we're uh we're over here on bowen's bowen's wharf um you guys would be a little bit kind of over in that direction. Um, so this is telling us a lot about the waterways and the seas and our various other instruments. Somebody mentioned they were a little bit, uh, a little bit chilly today, but we're reading a temperature right now of uh, almost 19 degrees Celsius, that is. Um, wind is blowing uh, around 15 knots, and uh, you can see the direction it's coming in. Um, so this is where we're driving a lot of the ship and well, the deck department works. Um, from here, I'm going to go down below a deck. And I will use the midship doghouse over here. With, as I mentioned, we are a working ship, so we're going to see a lot of different types of tools around. During the winter time, a lot of our rigging storage will use, this is our science lab here, or our sea lab or wet lab. Um, when we're at sea, working with students, one of the things we're doing, um, 
monks operating the ship are running various tests, uh, ocean tests, looking at different water quality. In the lab. So this is kind of our science lab with our screens, you know, looking over here. Um, to go down below a deck right now, we'll use our, the uh, stairway here. On the side, this is a handicap accessible, accessible ramp. ramp, ramp, ramp. ramp. There we go. Um, moving forward down to the front of the vessel, we we'll, this is what is called our bosun's locker. Um, a lot of the tools and the things we're using to work on the ship are located over here. So now I'm at the front of the ship. I'm going to move aft again. Our library and classroom. What of the cabins, the berths are here. I think it then sounded like a vortex as well. We all heard that. Um, we, have, we have various cabins. Now, these, a lot of these cabins our crew is living in, so I'm not going to open up their, uh, their cabin and, and, and show you where they're living. Uh, on a ship, this is known as a galley. This is where we do a lot of our cooking and our food. Um, when we are sailing and offshore with up to 49 people on board the vessel, there's a lot of people to, uh, to cook for. This is known as the crew mess where you would sit down to eat and there's always, always coffee on. Uh, I'm going to move aft and I'm going to show you in a moment. I'm going to save this for Jen, but um, is our great cabin. And I'm not going to click on Jen yet. I'm going to first now kind of show you, go even down yet another level into our engine room. I'm here at the front of our engine room. Uh, including by sails, we can move the ship, but we also have two cat diesel engines and one generator and a second generator um, there's a fair amount of equipment down here I was we were talking to eric we met eric this is one of his domains and this is one of the things that he is in charge of is taking care of all of these systems um, so he's somebody who's really well versed in physics simple machines and also kind of math um, to be able to carry out a lot of these functions he's had a lot of specialized training um, but a lot of the type of training you're going to be kind of getting getting for this is, is really going to be hands-on experience, time in the engine room. Um, I move forward one other compartment. This is known as our auxiliary machine room. These are our power distribution panels, and we run on a lot of different types of power, um, from shore power or, or power that we're creating from the generators. This is our water maker. This can take salt water, turn it into fresh drinking water, our HVAC compressors, various pumps to pump out the black water and gray water tanks. Fire pumps and then oh, the always over here. Um, so that's a quick tour of our engine room. And Jen, I, you should be able to hear me right now. Can we, um, well, rather than drive Megas Technology snafu, Jen, I'm just going to come, come into, the, into the room here myself. Actually, Jen, can you pin yourself? Yeah, that's all right. I'm not seeing it. But um, this here is called our great cabin. Um, so remember when we were outside after the ship, when I was looking at the transom or the stern or the name of the ship, these were those windows we were looking out. Um, you heard me talking about uh, Jen, you say hi to Jen. Jen is our educational coordinator. Um, but this is a, for us, is a really a multi-purpose room. Um, this is where the crew meets, has their meetings and discussions. Um, we'll kind of use this as a staff. It could also be a, a place to eat, but um, you know, it, it's a very multi-multi-function room. And it, we feel it's one of the prettiest, uh, prettiest rooms there are. Um, uh, I'm not paying attention to the comments. I'm sorry. Um, so that's our great cabin. And what I'm gonna, we're going to do right now is we're going to go back out onto deck and we'll present, uh, present kind of the challenge we, have, we had for everybody. 
Um, as I mentioned, uh, Savannah asked the question, can you take real tours of the ship? And yes, Savannah, you can. Um, that's something in the summertime, we're usually at Fort Adams. Um, we will be probably going over there at some point. Um, but we're still kind of waiting to hear from the governor about what our possibility of, of having, having people on the boat for, for tours. Um, so we're still, we're still kind of looking at that. Um, so as I mentioned previously, one of our challenges is to be able to get these life rafts off the ship. These life rafts need to go ashore to be serviced annually. Uh, and with the crew, it's something that's very, very difficult for us to do. They weigh 371 pounds. This is not something that you can throw on your shoulder and walk down the gang over here. So, how, you know, and I'll get these life rafts up and over the ship that are 371 pounds. Um, they first have to be lifted up and over the rail and then back down and over. Um, so in order to do that, we are going to use a simple machine. A simple machine, uh, something you've been studying at, but all that is really doing is it's multiplying the effort that you put in. Um, some of you have seen uh, the presentation that uh, Mr. Rock sent out to you earlier today. Um, but our simple machine is going to be off this boom here. That's that horizontal piece. Um, and using a block and tackle system. It's the block and tackle system is what the actual simple machine is. We get a close up here with Miranda. That's something kind of you saw earlier. So we have some pulleys. We're using the word blocks. It also really means a, a pulley. Inside here, we also have a setup here. The setup top, though, is not going to be moving with the load, the load being our life raft. These blocks down here will be moving with the load. Um, and that is where we amplify our effort. Um, these have a block or a pulley up top and down on the bottom. In the middle is the axle. We also kind of think of that and consider that more as like a lever. Um, this particular system is a four to one system, um, meaning that we can amplify our effort four times. Um, so if the life raft weighs 371 pounds, we're going to amplify the effort by four. We only need to have a force, um, a quarter of the force to be able to lift these life rafts now. And that's kind of what this simple machine is able to provide for us. Um, when any type of lifting operations, safety is paramount. Um, one of the things our crew is trained for um, that they've worked on. They're using what's called a choker hold and choker straps around the life raft. Um, they also know that the rigging tackle that we're actually using is rated for that weight. Um, so they're making sure they're setting that up and they have a full three people running, running this operation. Um, looks like Miranda will be controlling what's called the tag lines. These are the lines. So it's, uh, it's remember it's blowing 15 knots out here that she'll control to prevent the life raft from blowing around back and forth in the air. And I know when you're looking at a guy like Jackson, like he's got no problems lifting 371 pounds. You're probably right about that. But Jackson does like to take it easy. So he's using this line. You kind of see him pulling it up here. It goes up the boom to the first set of tackle and coming down here to that type of angle. Jackson's effortlessly hauling that life raft up here. Okay. The rest of our crew are um, checking our tag lines, making sure it's ready. And Miranda will be going down to the pier to physically receive, receive the life raft, I believe. Yeah, we're, we got that slug making it easier since we've got the capper out here. We're swinging it around. And I'll shut up for a bit. I'll be quiet for a bit and let these crew do what they need to do. Can you bump it up? Yeah. All right, I'll get it. 
gonna say, do you need a hand? For every foot, one foot of elevation that the life raft gains in a four to one purchase, Jackson needs to pull out four feet of line on the input effort here. Input effort's going down. Output effort goes up. And again, I should be quiet because the crew needs to communicate through this evolution. They've raised the life raft approximately uh, three feet or more right now. And it's about to be able to clear, clear the railing. The next trick for them will be to physically get it down onto the pier, which is from the railing approximately uh, 15 feet down to the pier. Perfect. You're hearing the, com uh, the crew communicating right now. Um, communicating on a ship, there's very specific language you need to use. Uh, so you're clear. Um, operating any type of vessel, there's really no room for any mistakes to be made out there. You know, you have a 371 pound object dangling over somebody's head. You have to make sure your operations are, uh, have nailed it. They're able to fit the life raft between the gangway and the side of the ship. As we're doing that, Jackson is hearing instructions from the crew on how to operate the line. He has no visual contact of what's going on. He's relying on the communication from his crew members to do that. You see, Rand is using a specific hand signal And we've landed our first life raft. Uh, I wrapped down here on the pier. And that is an example of how a simple machine can help put in some work for you. Some of you may have heard the phrase, um, don't work harder, work smarter. Well, that's something where the simple machines can come in. Um, now, as I've been kind of touring you through the ship and, and reviewing some of the stuff here, I haven't been really paying attention to any of the questions. And I'd like to ask Mr. Rock to step in if you've seen any of the questions that I, that I may have, have missed along, along the way. All right, definitely happy to. Thank you very much, Dan, that was awesome. Um, and great job crew with the simple machine. So I'll just kind of scroll up. I'm waiting for the comments to, um, to load and I will start to ask a couple. So great job, students. Um, I appreciate you all holding, um, holding tight and being respectful throughout the presentation. Um, let's see. So, um, one question from James Enright was how much does the boat weigh overall? Great question. Thanks, James. Um, our gross tonnage, that's a measurement of a ship kind of weight, um, is 471 gross tons. 471 gross tons. That is heavy. Nice. All right. Um, and then Philippe had a question. Did you, have you ever had to use the lifeboat that you showed us? Um, yes, we have. Um, but I'll, I'll preface that. So the, 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 the work boat here um, does uh, serve as a work boat when we're moving. Uh, one of our crew members, a lot of time will be Eric, will be in it handling the lines that are that, that hold the ship to the pier. Um, so we'll use it as a line boat. Um, its primary function is as a rescue boat. And although we've never had a crew overboard incident, um, it's better to stay on the ship than, than to go crew overboard. Um, we do use it to practice crew overboard recovery drills. So that's another thing that our crew is trained in. And it's something what we're operating that they'll practice every single month. Um, and part of that is using the boom to pick up the boat 
launch it over the side and conduct a rescue. Um, so it is used, it's used frequently, um, but in the operation of the Oliver Hazard Ferry, we have not actually had to use it in a real emergency, but we do train for those emergencies. Terrific, terrific, thank you. Um, and Maddie had a question about the crew. In normal circumstances, like maybe not in a global pandemic, how many crew members do you usually have aboard? Um, during our summer months, we will usually try to have um, at, at least 11 crew members to operate the vessel. Um, if we were taking a group of, say, 49 students out for a single day, we would, we would have even, even more crew than that. Um, we could have up to 15 crew members. And a lot of times crew members could be part of Eric's department in the engine or the deck department. Um, we have a, you know, seven miles of rigging, 22 sails. You have to go all the way up there to even get that sail out. So um, you need a lot of hands to be able to do that. Um, wow. During the winter time, uh, when we're not sailing, um, we'll have a crew of anywhere between two or three. Um, the crew do live aboard the vessel. This is their home. Um, as well as their workplace. So it's kind of an interesting job. Um, and one of the neat things uh, as a crew member on a, a ship like ours or, or any ship is, is you get to go to a lot of neat places and travel travel the world. I'll, I'll ask Miranda real quick. Uh, so she's in operations. Um, Miranda, how, how, many, how many ports have you visited? How many countries have you been to? In the world, in your, in your maritime career. China. She's been to China. Taiwan, Alaska, I know. Well, West Coast. Guam and Hawaii. So there are a lot of opportunities to Singapore, a lot of opportunities to see, see the base and even Africa. So it's, it's one of the benefits, uh, cool kind of aspects of, of becoming a mariner is you get to go and travel and see, see the world. That is awesome. Um, so speaking of all those sales, ran out of question. How many jib sheets are there on board? Do you have a figure for that? Jonathan, are you still on? Um, jib sheets. Yeah, so sorry. How many? Sorry, so live. How many jib sheets are aboard yeah. the vessel? Uh, so all of the jibs right, have to have two sheets to get passed from side to side. So there's four on the head rig, and there's another two between each of the masts. So we're looking at eight, about 16 different jib sheets, or sheets that go to stasis. Ren, it sounds like you're a sailor. Sheets. All right, 16. That's terrific. Lots of line, for sure. Um, and then Ren had another question. Here's he was looking at the ramp down to um, down to the dock, the gangway. How much weight could that ramp hold just about? Do you know the figure for that or roughly what the safety weight would be? Uh, we do. So you, you are you are seeing kind of the ramp. Um, Eric's kind of going down right here. What is my man? How are you see these lines coming up here? They're also supported up from, from the yard. Um, Jackson, do you know how much uh, weight the, the gangway can be rated for? 1,000 pounds. 1,000 pounds. Four and a half people. Or four and a half big people. 1,000 pounds. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you. Um, let's see. What else do we have? So um, we have a couple from two different Maddies here. So Maddie Biastre asked, have there been any emergencies at sea? Um. The Oliver Hazard Perry has not ever had an emergency that you might be thinking of, like there's a fire or, or uh, flooding um, or, or something, something like that. Um, uh, emergencies can happen. Um, and that is you know, kind of why that you're always continually working on the boat to make sure you, you, you mitigate any of the risks risk of those emergencies. Um, a lot of folks will hear about, you know, the, the headlines, you know, the, the, some ship has done this or some ship has done that. Um, you know, the Oliver Hazard Barry has never been in an emergency where anybody's life was was at, at, at a threat. All right. Awesome. Thank you. And then um, 
Maddie Aguilar, she is interested in um, CPR and, and I know she's got an interest in this from being her teacher in class. She's really interested in, in uh, our body systems units um, of study. And she's wondering if you're certified to perform CPR if needed on board the boat. Uh, we we do always have to have somebody trained trained in first aid. That always has to be part of the crew. Um, majority of our crew does actually have their their CPR first aid training. Um, in addition, in addition to that, um, as mariners, our crew has a lot of other other also training for emergency responses. Um, whether it be crew overboard recovery, firefighting, um, or even sh shipboard medicine. Um, but most of our crew will does have at least at, at a minimum their first aid CPR certificate. Awesome, awesome. Um, and Rosie has a question. I don't I don't know the answer to this. She she says it's okay if you don't know either. And um, where is the original Detroit ship? Is it Detroit a type of ship or is that a? <laughs> That's a great question, Rosie. Um, so we we are. I'm gonna switch this around. Um, we are the Oliver Hazard Perry. We are named after Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry, um, who was a native son of Rhode Island. Uh, it was also served as the a commander during the War of 1812 and specifically on the Battle of Lake Erie. Um, Battle of Lake Erie was a real turning point in a, of the War of 1812 um, because of Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry. And during that battle, he captured the HMS Detroit, HMS is Her Majesty's or His Majesty's ship, um, to defeat the British in the Battle of 1812. Uh, previously, the original HMS Detroit was a, a U.S. ship. The British captured it, and then Oliver Hazard Perry captured it back during that battle. Um, what makes this story very, very unique is prior to this ship coming to Rhode Island, was merely just a hull. You think of it as like a, a shell. Uh, just there's nothing on the inside, nothing on the deck, no rigging, no no systems or anything. And we, as an organization, um, we purchased that from a group out of Canada that originally built that hull for a period replica of the HMS Detroit. Um, we acquired it, made outfit it, made some really really large and serious modification to it and thus becoming the Oliver Hazard Perry. So it's a quite little, little twist of fate that the real country Oliver Hazard Perry won, could arguably say won the War of 1812 by capturing the HMS Detroit and our Oliver Hazard Perry, the ship today, was originally built to be a period replica of the HMS Detroit. Um, cool. Question That's coming in here about motion sickness. Um, there are people who get seasick and then there are people who lie about getting seasick. Um, and everybody's going to experience at one point um, with more and more experience aboard uh, any, any type of vessel, you can become more accustomed to it. Uh, what's important about seasickness though is, is you stay hydrated and, and do something about it. Um, one way to also to kind of combat seasickness is to be out on deck working, seeing the, the horizon, um, not being down in your cabin or bunk. Cool. That's great. Um, so Luisa, I'm scrolling up a little bit. Luisa Rodriguez had a question, um, and this could be to you or any of the crew members, but what's the longest time you've been out to sea? Uh, the longest the Oliver Hazard Perry has been at sea has been to Bermuda. It's been down around Florida. It's been down into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's also been to Cuba. Uh, probably the longest voyage in any one of those lakes could have been maybe approximately 10, 10 days. Um, yeah, well, the ship, ship has also sailed from Philadelphia back into Newport, um, where I believe some, some, some teachers you may know have been, could have been on that voyage. Yeah, I was on that trip. That was a great trip. <laughs> That was awesome. That was like that was five or seven days. I can't remember exactly how many, how long, but that was terrific. Yeah, great question, Louisa. Thanks. Um, so then, um, we, I know we're kind of coming up against it, but we have about three more questions. Is that okay with you, Dan? We're we're here until as long as we're we're here as long as needed. All right. Thank you. We've got some great questions. So, um, Rena has another one. If the if the raft falls into the sea, the the rafts you were just listing uh, lifting. 
when it's in the capsule, are you able to receive it? Will it float even if it's in the capsule? Like if it in the ocean? Yeah, it will. Um, so that whole 371 pound object uh, has a line coming out of it. That line is tied to a strong point on the ship. And you throw that whole capsule overboard, it's floating in the water. And you pull that pull, pull that line out until the life raft inflates. And inflation happens very rapidly. Um, the canisters would most likely sink at, at that point. But you have a 20, uh, a, a giant inflatable platform that can, that can hold 25 people with survival gear and equipment inside. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we've got some people that are curious. Um, I think um, just to reiterate for some people that, um, that might have come on a little late, can you let us know how long the ship is? Yeah, its overall length is, is 200 feet. Um, 200 feet? Bowden Storm. 200 feet. Awesome. There um, uh, Garrett, somebody, if, if we didn't get to any of your questions, you can please, please, please we love your questions. We want to hear from you. You can always email us at info at ohpri.org. Info yeah. at ohpri.org. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think that was um, – that's some good ones. I know we have some questions about students um, – asking how much it costs to be on board and, and how those trips work, but that would be great for them to email. And I can also get, I can also email you and, and talk more about trips and things like that for students. Um, and yeah, just, we'd love if we didn't get any of those questions. I'm saying, yes, I've, I've sailed on a 420 before. Um, they are fun boats. Uh, I really like this one from Ren. Have you ever had one of those scares when a screw rolls across the deck and you don't know where it came from? <laughs> um, every day, Ren, every day. It's not just always on the ship, but uh, it's an important question. You, you may not know where the screw has come from, but um, you better bring it to somebody's attention and, and, and find out where, where, why it's rolling across the deck. Yeah, <laughs> very good question. And maybe to wrap it up, a couple of students have asked about the student trips and how, and how those work. Um, and what they cost is there um just a yeah, quick un yeah unfortunately we we don't know what the complete picture for the summer is going to look like for us um with the various shutdowns and, and whatnot um so we're right now we're kind of in a, a bunch of on standby kind of waiting to see you know at the same time we're pretty confident that we are going to be able to do some sales probably in, in august um as a ship, we need a lot of crew members, and those crew members are the types of students who, who come aboard um, to help us run the ship. We haven't made any definitive plans that we we're going to be doing A, B, and C uh, during these dates, um, but we will obviously keep you posted um, in terms of when, when we will be sailing, sailing again. Um, we would love to hear from you and see from you if you have the opportunity to come by and come by and see us as well, um, as long as it's, you know, within the uh, health guidelines. Um, yeah. Costs could be very different, um, you know, but right now we're, we're not, not completely sure what, what, it, what it's going to be. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I think we, we caught them all. If I missed a question, I apologize, but I'm seeing a lot of thanks from the students um, and, as, and, and a lot of comments that this was amazing and that was interesting and thank you and thank you. So um, I, I really appreciate it, Dan, and, and everyone at Oliver Hazard Perry. This was a huge success and, um, and the students got a lot out of it. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Mr. Rock. Thank you, Thompson. We appreciate the opportunity to share our ship with you, and we, we look forward to hearing from you uh, in the very near future. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off. Thank you, students. Thank you, Oliver Hazard Perry. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great Bye -bye. day.